Hi guys, um, this is HK. Um, John is actually running a little bit late, so just bear with us for a little bit more uh, while we are actually trying to get him to fix his connectivity. Yeah, we'll be back. Just a moment. Hey guys. Ah, so we are live. Hi John. Hello, John. Hold on one second. Yes. yes. Hopefully Hi. that's Hi. why is it still echoing? It, it, <laughs> it, it seems like uh both of your devices actually is close to each other. That's why that is actually echoing. I mean, one way of actually doing it is that we can put your face up first and then we remove it and use your your, your drawing cam to actually have all the conversation. Does it work? I mean, we don't need two devices. That's what I'm saying. Well, I've switched the volume off and the audio off on this one. Yeah, I have no idea how it works. I mean, technology-wise, it, it's still very crazy. <laughs> um, that's a fucker. Why is that doing that? Audio is switched to off. Oh, for fuck's sake. oh uh, okay. Why? Why don't you do this? Um, just for this particular camera, you remove it, and we'll use the mic to actually just focus on your drawing, and we can talk. Does it work? Okay. Yeah. And you need to actually turn on the mic on your drawing cam, John. Yeah, no, I think it's better. I don't think there's any yes. echo. Um, uh, John, you need to actually unmute your mic, if that's what. Why did it not unmute? Ah, ah yes. Yeah, yeah. Miracle. Yes, yes, yes. Now yeah. it works. I, so I don't no understand why, HK, but when we did the test run, it was perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, I think technology just worked in a strange way. But um, mm -hmm. we've seen your face. Um, when you, you're done with your drawing, let's let's come back and use the other device and sh uh, look at your face again, shall we? Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Um, Have a good day. Yeah. So I think with that inter interruption, let's actually kickstart today. Um, who we have today is... Um, John McCrea. John McCrea actually co-created Hitman, uh, which debuted in um, Demon Annual number two, to um, co-created it together with Garth Ennis. And since then, he actually created many more stories with Garth Ennis. And of course, that before Garth Ennis, he has been doing some Marvel books. So yeah, I think yeah. let's kickstart today. And uh, how shall we actually run this? Uh, say that again? Um, what what are you going to do today? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to draw a picture of Judge Death, um, I guess. Yes, okay. Uh, HK. Um, oh, and hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hey, John. Good to oh, see yeah, you. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, so bad of us. We are, we are so starstruck that we did not even properly oh, yeah. introduce ourselves. Yeah, so I'm um, HK. Um, I'm from Malaysia. And this is Tom. Uh, well, Tom, you can actually introduce yourself a little. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> finally good to see you, John. I've, I've actually seen you at almost every UK convention I've been to. And the first right. print that I ever bought was from you. It was a Batman, actually. Oh, very, very cool. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I do do a lot of shows, I've got to admit. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, about oh. one a month. I, I, I te well, back when there were shows, of course. When there was show, right? So yeah, that's exactly, exactly what I wanted to ask. How, how are you holding mm -hmm. up in light of the pandemic? I mean, are you doing okay? Uh, it's it's interesting. So it is, Tom. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the government over here has been reasonably generous to freelancers and um, mm -hmm. self-employed people. Uh, mm -hmm. So that has helped. Plus. Um, 
I mean, and obviously, as far as work goes from publishers, that has taken a real hit because of, uh, you know, uh, well, everybody's having to bat them down. There was nothing being published for a while. Um, and as they're gearing up to publish again, there's been a lot of um, a lot of publishers who are struggling and a lot of mm -hmm. publishers who have uh, basically cut back to their core. DC and Marvel have trimmed back their titles for the moment quite substantially. So any work for... Uh, people who weren't in the in the very core titles of those books has pretty much dried up. So yeah, the way I'm dealing with it at the moment is that um, I have been doing a fair number of commissions mm -hmm. on this online. We'll be um, seeing a lot of those actually online. Uh, let me yeah. just pick up some of the photos for the yes. benefit of people that miss up miss it up. Uh, there's one with Spider Man kicking a football. This is pretty good. <laughs> it's Thank good you. because. I would actually suspect that this is actually commissioned by a non-US citizen. <laughs> uh, and no, you're wrong. It was actually a US oh. citizen. Um, and in fact, the story behind that one is that mm -hmm. when, when they asked me to draw Spider-Man playing football, mm -hmm. I just naturally assumed it was soccer. American football? Oh, oh right. no, no. I just naturally, because I just didn't think, because I knew nothing about sport. Uh, 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 and, uh, and and care very little about it, but I uh, mean uh, I understand that football exists, but I just didn't think of American football at all. Went and did the whole thing, and then sent it into them. No, no. Before I sent it into them, I suddenly had this horrible realization. Oh God, she probably means American football. And uh, um, uh, but as it transpired, actually the nephew that she was getting the commission done for was into. Uh, soccer so and spider-man so that was uh, worked out fine but uh yeah it's one of those moments where you go oh geez i really didn't <laughs> check with the client properly there did i, I uh -huh. didn't, um, make sure i knew what the hell i was drawing before i started drawing it um <laughs> but these things happen but yeah yeah, yeah. i mean but have I, you ever I been in a situation I... where you really messed up commission you just went ah oh, geez Oh, well, I mean, as far as just drawing really badly, uh, yes, I've done that on a number of occasions. There's been many, the commission that I've had to just scrap and start again. I mean, that's oh. that's true, I would imagine, of most artists, um, mm -hmm. uh, be it commissions or be it actual pages of artwork or what have you. There are just days where the pencil or the pen is not working. Yeah. And uh, no matter how much you sort of slap yourself around the face or um, <laughs> or what drink alcohol or whatever to kind of uh, limber yourself up, nothing works. Um, so yeah, there's been many times where I've scrapped full pages or 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 commissions or what have you, and just had to start again. You know, often mm -hmm. I find that just setting down the pencil, moving away, doing something completely different. Um, watching a movie, going out into the garden and doing a bit of gardening, just hanging around with the kids, whatever. Just mm -hmm. do something that completely resets you. And then yeah. when you come back, you sort of go, oh, why didn't I, why couldn't I do this before? <laughs> what's, what's, what's wrong? Well, but yeah, so it's, um, so it's one of those uh, things. I mean, every, every artist, I mean, one of my favorite artists, Mick McMahon, um, mm -hmm. he's, quite famous for scrapping entire pages, you know, coming in Dave Gibbons, who used to share a studio with Mick tells mm -hmm. a story where he would come into the studio. Mick had been, and him had been in the studio the previous day working away and Mick had drawn this amazing double page spread of the ABC warriors. And then mm -hmm. they come into the office the next day Mick looks at it and goes, huh, and just scrumbles the whole thing up, throws it into Gee. the bin. <laughs> and and starts again and Dave waits until Mick leaves the office and then just takes it out of the bin and flattens it up <laughs> <laughs> and keeps it because you know because it's of course amazing it's just yeah. that for whatever reason and this is this is the problem with art is that you know I'll look at a drawing or a panel that I'm unhappy with mm -hmm. uh, or I hate and 
and then I'll take the page that the panel is on and I'll show it to someone and say, where's the terrible drawing on that page? And they'll <laughs> go, I can't see it. It all looks great. Or they'll point to the wrong, or they'll point to the wrong panel and go, well, that looks a little bit wrong. And you're just like, no. <laughs> so, you know, for for whatever maybe your you may look at it and sort of go, well, I don't like this at all. But you know, it's it's one of those things I've learned that when you are working at a comic convention mm -hmm. and uh, you do a drawing for someone and they're mm -hmm. sitting watching you do the drawing and they're going, oh, that's amazing. And internally, yeah. you're going, oh, Jesus, this is one of the worst drawings I've ever done. <laughs> never, you never, ever, ever say that because obviously that person thinks it's amazing. And so yeah. if you say that it's terrible and start again, or if you hand it to them and say, oh, it's not as good as it could have been, what are you doing? What are you saying to them? It's just yeah. it's so I've had to learn that along the way that you've got to you've got to just sometimes what you see as a bad drawing another person will see as amazing drawing and sometimes you've just got to accept i mean everybody every comic artist has artwork out there published that they wish wasn't or wish they could do again or wish they had another shot at but obviously you can't go back and start redrawing you can't george lucas everything you know <laughs> you've got to You've just got to get on with it and um, and, uh, and and accept that sometimes you were maybe not feeling so well, or you um, or you just didn't have enough time, mm -hmm. or what have you, and you just had to do something that isn't quite as good as you would hoped. And that, that's that, the na nature of the beast. But it's it's I mean on that particular topic, right? On making art, I thought that making arts is actually a problem problem solving process as well. Because especially all these manual art that's actually happening, you you may have actually um, created some mistake, but you are trying to actually solve it by maybe adding additional black in it or just try to actually fix the problem as you go. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. Um, yeah. it, it's it's all problem solving, and I that, I mean I think that sometimes some of the nicest work that you do comes sometimes from unforced or, or accidental yes. <laughs> heavenly errors or what have you, mm -hmm. mistakes that you make. And then you go, oh, that's actually, oh, if I do that with that, then that will do, and and you you and, and it makes it better. And that's why I, to a degree, why I prefer physical art on pa paper, working mm -hmm. with a pencil and a pen, because mm -hmm. you you don't, have the ch opportunity to go control alt z yes so we, mm -hmm. i mean obviously i've got a rubber and uh -huh. i've got a and i've got a tip x pen so mm -hmm. i can fix things but it's not as easy and mm -hmm. uh uh, and that's not to say that i don't use the computer to fix mistakes but yeah it's like a problem solving thing like you say but yeah but, I, I mean i, I do use um, the computer to fix mistakes as well mm -hmm. okay. uh, when i scan things in i will then you know, if I've done a head too big, I can squeeze it down squeeze using the transform down. tool or what have you. Um, but of course, that that throws up its own thing as well. In that, you know, I like to sell my original artwork. Ah, so yes. if you change things too much on the on the on the computer, then mm -hmm. what you're selling to the person who's seen the comic isn't exactly what they saw in the comic or it could be radically different if you change things too much on the computer. So I do try to keep any computer changes down to a bare minimum because I do like to sell my artwork. Um, yeah, I think part of the appeal of original artwork for collectors or even people that actually purchase things like the artist edition of artworks that is actually reproduced high quality, that's where that we start to actually noticing uh, tidbits or uh, watermarks or or whatever that is actually placed on top to try to fix some problem. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I love. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I I I love. I I have a lot of original artwork of of my heroes, and I do love to look at the artwork and see the flaws and right. see the corrections and see where they've struggled yes. and maybe had to tip X things out. I've got an Arthur Adams page. 
And oh, oh it, gosh, and, Arthur well, Adams. Well, I've got three Arthur Adams pages, but I'm not going to post. Is it somewhere near you that you can actually showcase? We just hosted him a few hours ago. All right, okay. Well, I, I love I love his work. He's he's amazing. He's Obviously, amazing. <laughs> when I bought the pages, it was this is 30 years ago when oh, it was feasible for me to buy an Arthur Adams page. No, yeah. obviously, I couldn't afford it. No, you can't even get into the commission list. Uh, I mean, he, no. he was accepting commission for the Malaysia as well as the Singapore um, collectors. I opened yeah. it up just and finally everything got taken away. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, he's Arthur Adams, you know, and um, <laughs> he's a genius. Uh, but, but, but one of the pages I have has Storm on it. And, oh, and he's, <laughs> he's basically... Tipexed out her face completely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then redrawn the face over the tipex, you know, and you just sort of look at it and go, yeah, okay. So Arthur Adams makes mistakes as well. That's good. Yeah, enough. exactly. I, I mean, I was. What a relief. I mean, if, if you actually see some of his uh, black and white works that he actually put it online, I always thought that he's so perfect. And now yeah. recently he's actually uploading some of his uh, work in progress stuff, and I, I can actually see some. What you call the tipex or the correction fluid that they are actually yeah. putting on top? Yes, I know, and I mean that's the thing. Um, yeah. I, I did. Uh, I mean, there's very few artists who don't get everything exactly right. Uh, yeah. Who who get everything exactly right? I mean, um, so the uh, you know I remember being in the DC offices one time in Joey Cavallari's office, and he had some. He was doing a an anthology book. And um, uh, Jaime Hernandez was doing mm -hmm. a couple of pages for him. Uh, I'm a huge Jaime Hernandez fan. Oh, that's uh, or, or Jaime Hernandez. I think it might actually be Jaime Hernandez. It's mm -hmm. pronounced. Um, and he had, he had got a couple of pages sitting there in the office. And it mm -hmm. was my chance to look at a, 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 a Jaime Hernandez page and see. And sure enough, there wasn't one mistake on it. That I could see, there was no tip X anywhere, and it was mm -hmm. um, it was mildly depressing because there. <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, Jaime doesn't make mistakes, so he might be one, he might be one of those guys. But for us mere mortals, uh, we we struggle along and uh, just try to do the best we can with what we've got, uh, and that you know that's why. But I, I have encountered people like I've done commissions for people. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've said to me beforehand, I don't like, or they bought artwork off me and they've specifically asked me, has mm -hmm. it got any tipex or corrections on it? Because mm -hmm. I don't want it if it has oh. tipex wow. or corrections. And I just, and I don't understand that at all. Yeah. Because if, if you just want it to be a perfect sheet, well, you might yeah, as well just get a, a print. Yeah, exactly. Just get a print. Just get yeah. a print. What's the point of the original artwork if it's just this pristine, <laughs> pristine immaculate sort of thing? Um, exactly. So yeah, it's it's an odd one, isn't it? Some some collectors are one way, and but you know we're all obsessive compulsive sort of weirdos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so 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 you know we've all got our little foibles in our collecting ways. You know you and you guys and me, we like to see the errors. And we like yeah. to see the faults and we like to see the process. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and that's, you're right. That's why those books are so popular because yeah. Yeah. people love that stuff. They've been yeah. actually doing pretty well. I mean, in order for you to actually get a whole collection of the OA and admire them, it will cost a fortune. So might as well just get an artist edition. Yeah, and yeah. everything is there, a whole full story. So um, yeah. Uh, where was I? Um, I mean, moving on the uh, surviving the pandemic, I, I, I've also seen that you actually been uh, doing some other commission. Uh, for example, like uh, just her say that you've done. Oh, sure. And well, also tangle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the some of the commissions I've done have been uh, for charity. Like that oh, okay. that, tank, that tank girl one was a charitable one. Um, okay. I mean, there's a lot of crap going on in the world, obviously. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think everybody wants to step up and do a little bit to help people out. I mean, I'm not, 
by any means struggling, really. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, the things are slightly more awkward than they were, but mm -hmm. I can't say that I'm having it rough. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas there are people who are, you know, without jobs, homeless, uh, you know, dying, mm -hmm. uh, being, being, uh, you know, sort of uh, beaten by cops, shot by cops, whatever. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a pretty grim fucking world at the moment. So yeah, yeah you can yeah. do, you do what you can to maybe help out a bit. Yeah. So it, it, anyway, but yes, yeah, yes, so, yes but I've, I've been enjoying doing the commissions. I've mm -hmm. got to say it's, um, it's, it's nice to, because a commission is so much less pressure than a page of artwork. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's so much easier. I can understand why there are people who, only do commissions they they quit doing comics if they've got mm -hmm. enough of a fan base mm -hmm. that they can they'd be popular enough just doing it's like it's like arthur adams i mean uh, he doesn't have to do any interior work ever again oh I but mean, he does do covers so he the, at yeah, least the covers that covers just <laughs> a big poster isn't it that's that's, that's <laughs> A cover is much easier than drawing an interior page. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I, I think that um we have plenty of um shows and we have different type of creators that actually come online. Uh, most of them wouldn't be crazy enough to actually want to do interior because it's so tangled that you pour yourself in into twenty eight pages. But if that book is not popular, it just doesn't go anywhere. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Plus. Plus, you're at the whim of um, working with a writer who loves the sound of his own voice or something. Um, I, I've drawn comics where you you end up drawing page after page after page of people just sitting around talking. And um, after a couple of hours of just drawing page after page after page of people talking, or a couple yeah. of days or weeks, uh, you just want to throw yourself in front of a bus. Quite frankly. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it, so, so for that aspect of things, you, I mean, Steve Dillon, uh, mm -hmm. or God rest him, uh, yeah, Steve, was, rest him. Steve was, Steve was one of those amazing artists who actually loved to draw that sort of stuff. He loved to draw people sitting around talking. Uh, he preferred <laughs> it to, to drawing Action. But he has perfected, ironically, he, he's perfected the way he tells a story. I, I think that, Yep. Steve is actually a great storyteller. Oh, sure. he, he use simple lines, simple layout, and you can yep. tell very emotional stories. I yeah, mean, you can tell that it's a Steve yeah. Dillon page just by looking at it. I mean, the way he designs his characters, the way he talks, it's... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no, Steve is one of the best. I mean, uh, admittedly, I have a more of a fondness for his earlier work when, when honestly, he was Steve was trying a bit harder um um but he uh he he boiled his work down to just such a perfect essence after a while that it was you couldn't not admire it and really enjoy it i mean there's there's no steve dillon artwork that i haven't liked uh mm -hmm. but it's it's just you know sometimes you sort of you you did wish for him to sort of cut loose a bit more and um, but but as far as telling a story goes one of the best one of the best my one of my favorite quotes about steve was when when somebody was in, in interviewing alan davis mm -hmm. and they asked alan davis who is your favorite artist and alan went it's steve dillon and the interviewer was quite shocked because he wasn't mm -hmm. expecting him to say steve because you know alan davis is much more of a the direct influence you can see from somebody like neil adams or somebody like that mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um the, the interviewer said, well, why, why Steve Dillon? And Alan said, minimum effort, maximum output. And uh, I really enjoyed that quote about Steve, you know, minimum effort, maximum output. But it's, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, but Steve always, but he, he had just such a command of storytelling that he could get away with that. If I tried that, uh, I'd be run out of time. So. But you're de very, pretty decent yourself. How you actually tell a story of especially things that is supposed to be gross, you are you you will be able to actually make it funny and interesting. 
Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a pacifist vegetarian, but I tend to end up drawing just the worst stuff ever. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I don't, I don't know why that is, but it seems to be the case. Anyway, Maybe yeah, because you're hanging out with Garth all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah you way, know. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, of course, just this guy, you know. He's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not a... People often ask me, so what's Garth Ennis like, expecting him to be a serial killer or something? And you know, he's, just, <laughs> he's, just a, he's just a guy who you know, likes to hang out with his pals and go to the pub and have a drink. And I guess he gets it all out on the page. Um, I guess if he uh, if he didn't write, maybe he would be the serial killer. I don't know. Seems therapeutic. Yeah, no. I remember the first time I met him. I told Hancock, "Yeah, I met Garth Ennis," and Hancock mm -hmm. was like, "Did you put? Did he punch you in the face?" Oh, you still remember that I asked that, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, because yeah, he does have... well, it's it's quite a memorable one. <laughs> but I, I would say that once you actually get into reading Garth works, right, you realize that he's he likes mankind. He doesn't hate it. It's just that the world is actually so bad. He just wants to actually make fun of it. But yep. he, he's, he's a tough guy with a soft heart, I, I think. <laughs> he's a pardon? He's a tough guy with a soft heart. That, that's Well, aren't all the best ones? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, you know. that's. I mean, that's basically... Jesse Custer is his ideal, isn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse's the, you know, that's that's what Garth would aspire to be. And I mean, let's face it, most of us would. Um, mm -hmm. You know, fucking great in a fight, takes no <laughs> shit, but is a really good guy at yeah. the end of it all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't we all like to be that guy? Um, yes. Yeah. Like to be a ladies' lover. And of course, so, yes. <laughs> and also screw God for what he did to human. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we could all uh, uh, we'd all enjoy a bit of that, a bit of payback yeah. for the yeah. big G. Yeah. Um, so while we are actually having a conversation, uh, there are some questions that is actually coming in. Oh, cool. So coming from Julius, I, I think you answered the first part. What is like working with the uh, Ennis, but um, he also asked that does he write full script or do you guys just hash out some outline? What's the process usually like? Uh, uh, hello, Julius. Um, the the with Garth, um, for the most part, it's full script. Uh, however, when we're working closely on something, for instance, like Hitman, Garth would often ask me what I wanted to draw. So, for for instance, uh, if you've seen Hitman or if you've read it, there's a sequence in Bucket Burger, which is the ridiculous burger joint that mm -hmm. actually is probably not so ridiculous because these days there are actually burgers that are starting to look like that now. So <laughs> um, uh, I, it, somebody posted recently a, a picture of a burger that did resemble a bucket burger burger. So um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I said to Garth, it would be very much a good fun if we had a big sort of gunfight in Bucket Burger and mm -hmm. they used the giant dead fat guy as a shield and mm -hmm. then used him and rolled him out of the room to escape uh, while shooting over the top of him. So Garth wrote that into Hitman for me. Um, so I guess that idea was mine um, and a few other bits and bobs I've suggested along the way. But for the most part, um, when you're working with Garth, you kind of just go, I'm going to get a pretty good script here. Uh, also, you know, he's incredibly fast. He's a really fast writer. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're just basically too busy trying to catch up uh, <laughs> most of the time and forever failing obviously nobody nobody ever catches up with the writer but you never um, missed uh, a deadline when you're doing hitman right you did all 60 issues i'm not mistaken uh, uh, no that's that's i i i uh, um i was penciling and inking hitman to start with and uh i got to about issue 18 or 19 and realized i was burning out i just mm. i just couldn't hack the pace <clears throat> And uh, so I, I started looking around for an inker um, and getting people to do it. But I got the issue 20 and Gary Leach was going to come on as inker. But I uh. was so, so knackered that we had to give an issue to Steve Pugh. So he did, Steve did either 20 or 21. I can't remember. Steve drew that. It's the one where Tommy and Teagle finally get it on. And... Um, you know, actually, it's the perfect issue for Steve because Steve draws such fantastic women. Um, 
that uh, and I could never draw Teagle as well as as Steve drew Teagle. So so uh, Steve Pugh that is. Uh, so yeah, it 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 worked out quite nicely. But I do sort of regret that I cannot hold my hand up and say I drew all sixty issues. I mean, obviously there was uh, zero R, so there was that issue. Oh no, that was the demon. There was. There was one million issue, one million. Mm, so that yeah. was the next issue. And were there any other things? There was. No, I didn't do the annual either because Carlos did the annual. Um. So yeah, I think I did. So so I did do sixty issues if you include uh, one million issue, one million. <laughs> but I didn't do issue twenty or twenty one. I can't remember which one. Either twenty or twenty one. By the so, way, John, I just found that image that you were describing using oh. a fat guy as shoe. Hey, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, the power oh, of the internet. Yeah, the yeah, power of God. Look, God, God bless the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there, there was some comment as well that um, there are plenty of fans that actually know you from Hitman. Um, let me just pull yeah. those out. Uh, like oh, for example, I'm Barry. I'm most famous for. I, I, yeah. yeah. There's old uh, Tommy himself. Yeah. Yeah. I right. mean, Hitman is what I'm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 uh, obviously it's the thing I'm most well known for because a it's with Garth and b it was a very wrong it was a long running series sixty issues I mean mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever draw a sixty issues of a comic um, ever again probably. <laughs> just because just because the industry has changed so much that it's incredibly hard for um, it's incredibly hard for a comic to last 60 issues these days even one for you know there isn't like a, a Batman title you know an already established character it's incredibly hard to establish a new character in this market um, and also I just physically don't have the strength I think of mind and body <laughs> anymore to be yeah, uh, to be able to grind really 60 issues. It's a grueling, grueling yeah. doing a monthly schedule. Even yeah. for 10 issues is grueling these days, I find. Um, so so if you've got if you've got a monthly schedule of and 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 it's just and but the books are selling worse, the likelihood of you know, managing to do something of that. So I'll probably always be known as John Hitman McRae. You know, there'll be that I won't be able to replace that with something else. I was mm -hmm. hoping to become known as John Dead Eyes McRae, but oh, Dead Eyes. I, yeah, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. You know, what? Uh, but who knows? Right? Right? Can always go to the crowdfunding route. What's that? The crowdfunding route. So you, well, it could. Well, I mean, uh, that is uh, possibly a, uh, a, an option. Um, uh, Jerry Duggan and I are discussing options, so uh, we yeah. we shall see. We shall see. Uh, it's but the whole, like I said, everything's so up, on, up in the air at the moment with um, with this pandemic. It's just um, it's just you you just don't know what's going to happen around the corner. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> never did, but it's even more so. But yeah, even yeah. more so for 2020, that's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a real, yeah. it's, a real it's a real son of a bitch 2020. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. But probably that's, we that's, can laugh it out in 2021. Yeah, yeah 2021 is probably yeah. sitting there going, "Wait till you see me." <laughs> 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 you think you have a bad night? Good uh, God. Yeah, that's an interesting people. question, though. Are you saying that there's actually more issues of Dead Eye? Because I saw that it was issue four, and then it kind of stopped. Well, yes, there are more. Um, you're just probably going to have to wait a while until Jerry and I figure out what the hell we're going to do with ourselves and mm. do with it, because it's just things are tricky. I, I can't really say more than that. Um, mm -hmm. It's a comic that I really love, um, mm -hmm. and I think it's a great wee book. Uh, Jerry's a terrific writer. The, the character and his, and and his um, his relationship with his wife and 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 his just the whole setup is really 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 well developed. Um, I think he's a good looking character. I think he looks cool, uh, yeah. quite iconic. So yeah. um, so I think there's lo and there is loads of potential with him. It's just whether or not 
we can sort of pull ourselves together and find the way to to make more dead eyes happen at mm-hmm. the moment. Um, so yeah, just just I guess watch this space, I suppose, on that front. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any yeah, other so, questions? Uh, I think there are plenty of questions. Uh, no, but questions. Okay. Do you have any no, questions? Yeah. No, no, I'm good. Let's just move on with the audience. I'm sure they're willing to have their questions answered. Yeah, um, there's a question coming from CT. So what do you think dicks are doing uh, during this time of COVID-19? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, CP, for that uh, question. Uh, well, I mean, you know, considering that they're both the world's greatest fuck-ups um, <laughs> and, and the world's pretty, you know, and that's even when things are going reasonably well, uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure it can't be good. I mean, we did leave Doogie on a on a fairly, at the end of the final episode we did leave doogie in almost a good place but mm-hmm. and and i'm sure he had a you know he was there was a, re- a potential for a relationship starting up with this woman and blah 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 and so maybe things could have been good but mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure ivor will have dragged him back down into the depths of depravity and and, and hopelessness uh, mm-hmm. so i'd imagine it will be crap whatever it is uh, you know doogie will probably be working in a sewer or something, and Ivor will, you know, Ivor will just be sort of living in his house or his flat or his whatever, his squat, and and uh, and uh, spending his money, uh, and and dragging him into all sorts of crap. So yeah, not nothing good for the for those guys. <laughs> There's no, it all depends on the writers as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, you know the, the the only way that Doogie and Ivor are funny is if they're uh, if their yeah, lives are so so terrible that it makes yeah. us feel much much better about ourselves, um, they are being created for this particular reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For your entertainment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Garth and I did yeah, touch on that in one issue where where you actually get to meet Garth and myself in the mm-hmm. comic, and then Doogie and Ivor kicked the living shit out of us because they realized what we've been doing to them. <laughs> um, so yeah, there is that. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was so a good issue. I think that's uh, that. Moving on, uh, there is there is another question. I love your work on uh, the demon and Kidman. Any new work plan with Garth or for 2018? Uh, at the moment, uh, no to both of those. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Garth's working away. Garth loves war. He loves mm. uh, war stories. I don't know if you've noticed, uh, but, yeah, but he's, big, he's big into the wars, our Garth. Um, so, and and you know what I don't like drawing? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> is it over and over and over again? I don't mind drawing for six or eight pages mm-hmm. military hardware. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But if I have to draw 40 or 50 pages of military hardware and get it all right all the time, Mm-hmm. I tend to just start to go insane, so um, so it seems yeah. unlikely at the moment because Garth seems to be, I mean, happily writing away on the on the war story stuff. I mean, who knows? Um, and as 2000 AD goes, uh, we are. Um, I did a, a spider story for 2000 AD recently. Um, mm-hmm. here, here's how this bath's going at the moment. Uh, oh, wow, this is looking great. very nice. Yeah, he's looking all right. I mean, obviously, he looks terrible, but uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. but, but yeah. would that be something that when we praise it, your your mind is actually saying that mm, I'm not doing a good job? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want to admit it anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. No, no, exactly, exactly. Well said. Yeah, on that. You know, I'm not going to admit that. So uh, yeah, where, what was the what was the question? Oh yes, 2000 AD. Um, yeah. I I haven't uh, worked for 2000 itself for for a couple of years. The last thing I did was the Harvey story, the Mechanismo Harvey story, with uh, Wagner. But I just did a um, a spider story for the, the the Smash special that Rebellion published, uh, which is just out at the moment, and you can pick it up from the 2000 AD website. And, and the spider is an old 
50s, 60s character, uh, for, uh, British, a British supervillain type of guy. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a really cool, a, a cool character, actually. And uh, it was, uh, Rob Williams wrote it and uh, I drew it. And then there's a bunch of other stories of they're called. Uh, they came from a comic called uh, Valiant. And um, I think I've got that right. I think it's Valiant. Jesus, my mind. And um, there were other characters like Steel Claw and uh, House of Dollman, My Tech the Mighty, and there's stories of all those characters in the in the in the special as well. Um, and there's some uh, they've got Charlie Adlar draws the Steel Claw. Um, uh, Chris Weston doing House of Dollman. Stuff like that. So you've got a, it's a, it's a good little book. Um, and my, my uh, story was written by Rob Williams, uh, who's a really good writer too. And it was my chance to work with Rob. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, the story seems to have gone down well. Uh, the Smash special seems to have got, garnered a bit of interest and hopefully we'll get more of that. Um, and hopefully I'll get to draw the spider again because I really enjoyed drawing them. So yeah, let me, let me put up the... I haven't got necessarily anything with 2000 at the moment, uh, but things can change in a dime. You know, it's an anthology book, so you never know when they'll need a, a, another artist. I, I just put up the images of the Smash magazine that you mentioned. Oh, yeah, yeah there you go. I don't know, right? Yeah, yeah it's order, you, can, you can get it from the 2000 AD online shop, yeah. which is through their website. Um, yeah, it's a good good book. 60, 60 odd pages of high quality entertainment there for you, <laughs> boys and girls. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to re reading it. Um, let me just scroll through the uh, conversation and comment as well. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of greetings that's coming in. Like um, uh, oh, Barry you. just mentioning that uh, the McMahon stuff is brilliant. A very underrated artist outside of UK. Um, Lim Heng is just greetings. It's just greeting you, saying hi. That he's from Malaysia. Um, okay. I think Ng Boon Kiet is actually doing a response when he, when you actually tell the McMahon story of trash or the, the person that is actually being wow for for your drawings. So he was saying that uh, that's basically how I felt in every piece done by the artist. It's so great. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um, there's a question. There's a question from Myron. He's actually asking that uh, what original artwork does John own? You, you mentioned a, a couple of pieces from Arthur Adams. Um, is there anything yep. else that you own? Uh, I've got a Gil Kane Warlock page from issue one of Warlock, um, mm -hmm. which is nice. Uh, I, I love Gil Kane. Uh, you put it up a... or you're, you're keeping it in your ethics or... No, no, it's, it's on framed the... on my wall. It's framed on my wall. I, I try <laughs> to frame as much of my artwork as possible, but um, uh, but I've only got so much wall space and it, it is kind of running out a bit. Um, uh, let me think out what else. Uh, I've got a couple of page, pages by Simon Gaines. Uh, you may or may not know Simon's work. He did uh, an image book called... Oh, shit, I can't remember the name of the book. But he's a fantastic artist, uh, British artist. Um, he also did Godzilla for IDW uh, for mm. a bit. And uh, But uh, I've got a couple of pages of his. I've got a Jack Kirby Black Panther page, which is nice. Um, wow. That's cool. I, is that particular war nearby you? Did you say that again? Is that war that you actually put up all your original artworks nearby? Yeah. Um, uh, no, actually, not at all. Um, I'm okay. down in my kitchen, and right. uh, most of my artwork is in in the hallway upstairs. And, it, uh, and that's where we on. actually tested our first connection. Is uh, that right? Say that is again. That, is that where we actually tested our connection the, the previous time? Uh, we yes, were that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a Doug Monkey cover. Uh, if you know Doug Monkey's work. Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 he's a breather. He's yeah, Doug's a, a, I'm a huge fan of Doug's, and Doug's a big fan of mine, shockingly. Um, mm -hmm. He loves Hitman, so we traded covers. 
I, I do trade a lot of stuff um, and have done over the years. I've got a couple of Brendan McCarthy pages, which I'm very happy with. I love Brendan's work. Oh, Brendan is brilliant. Yeah. Um, who else have I got? Uh, oh, God. Uh, lots of Over stuff. Over the years got, of collecting. <laughs> yeah, I've got, a little, I've got a little tiny Alex Toth sort of uh, sketch. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, Jimmy Palmiotti actually gave me it, um, which was very nice of Jimmy. Um, These are collections we can barely dream of. I don't think I've ever seen a Jack Kirby page in real life. <laughs> is that right? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's hard to afford any of this stuff. Again, with the Kirby page, I got it about 20 years ago, and mm -hmm. I traded about four or five Hitman pages for it. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's nowhere near, you know, it's not primo Kirby. You know, you're not going to get, uh, it's not a like some big splash page or anything. Mm -hmm. It's got it's five Kobe or Kobe. panels. The Black Kobe Panther. Is a Kobe. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true enough. That's true. Yeah. It's signed by Jack, um, so that's nice as well. Though whether or not it was actually Jack's signature, or if whether or not it was Roz Kirby signing for him, because I knew that happened. That Roz mm -hmm. actually just signed Jack's stuff uh, for him while he was busy drawing page seven of the day, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in um, I was in Chicago. Was it Chicago? No, Baltimore last mm -hmm. year. And I met, um, oh, Christ, Mike Royer, who it, it was Kirby's inker for the longest time. And I got to hang out with Mike Royer in the bar and just, get pissed with him and uh it was really good fun mike has got a good few got good stories to tell uh he's an entertaining guy and he's the guy who inked my kirby page so mm -hmm. so the fact that i was sitting you know that's the kevin bacon thing isn't it the this degrees the of degree. separation yeah. yeah 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 and i was just sitting thinking to myself this is the guy who's inked jack kirby that's just mind bending so yeah i got to hang out with him and uh, when you think about things like that it's just incredible i've got some walt simonson pages as well a couple of x oh. factor a couple of x factor walt simonson pages I mean, if you don't mind um at a certain part of this particular session you can actually take out your uh phone and actually start showing those that's actually on your <laughs> wall <laughs> you know i honestly i honestly haven't ever taken photographs of them they're just right. Uh, no, yeah, because never... you see it on your daily basis, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, true. I mean, I do try to rotate occasionally so that mm -hmm. I'm not looking at the same thing all the time. Okay. But, but, um, but you know, who's got time for it a lot of the time? I mean, Jesus. And it, but yes, I, I do understand that I've got some nice pages. I mean, I've been to other people's. I mean, I know some people who. I, I was in New York at New York Comic Con. And uh, Jimmy uh, Palmiotti, again, asked me down to this party. He invited me along to this party that was in honor. Well, um, Amanda had done some artwork for a, a watch, I believe, mm -hmm. like a Harley Quinn limited edition watch. Right. And so there was this sort of party to launch the watch. And mm -hmm. uh, we went down to this, the where the party was being held. And it was being held in this office and the guy who owned the office was a huge comic art collector mm. and there were hundreds of pages of artwork around the office Gosh. and it was <laughs> the most unbelievable collection of artwork i'd ever seen in my life i mean early ditko early kirby kubert frazetta <laughs> everything you talk about it like a, a like, myth, like oh my god, early did go. Oh, it was the most mind. I, I I couldn't believe what I was looking at. It was uh -huh. the most mind bending collection of artwork I'd ever seen. Um, you know, Toth. He had everything. He had everything from everywhere, and he had everyone. And you know, who and if you just mention any ultra famous, unbelievable artist, and he had work by him. He had Frisetta full color covers. Um, Whoa. He had the 
He had oh, the Bernie he Wright and Journey into Mystery cover of Swamp Thing, Wright. The, first, the first Swamp Thing Bernie Wrightson cover, yes, yes. Um, you know, that had and, and just all this sort of stuff. And you would just you would walk from frame to frame and just mm -hmm. be constantly gobsmacked by the artwork <laughs> you were looking at. It was one of the most I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect when I said, ah, I'll come along to this party. But by God, I was happy I had said yes. Because it was just... I, I mean that you started yeah. sharing what you own but where we were wow. But when you actually tell the stories that yeah. you've seen other characters, that, that really escalated or elevated greatly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just a guy. I don't have a lot of money. I can't afford to buy artwork, really. Um, you know, I can't really... Not, not like... Not like that, <laughs> you know, not stuff like that. The fact that I own a couple of Arthur Adams pages is only yeah. because I bought them 30 years ago when they were cheap, when they were relatively cheap. Artwork was, you know, if you could go back in time, <laughs> but, you know, as that's... Much as you want. <laughs> yeah, just grab your more. Your audience can only imagine what these things look like in real life. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut up now. I apologize. Right <laughs> no, 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 anyway, no. What, what? Amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, let's face it. Most of us are in comics. Most comic artists are in comics because we're big fan boys and gir girls. So, yes. you know, it's it's not, I mean, it's, it's I, I just start to dribble when I think about, um, you know, artwork like that. I just, my mind. It's something wrong. Maybe the internet connection couldn't handle all this awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait for him to actually come back. Uh, yeah. Hello. Are you still there? Hello. Yes. Uh, there's a lag in terms of your connection. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, um, two seconds. Yeah. There's a two there's a second delays. And is that possible that someone in your house is actually having some Netflix on? Hello. I think he'll be back yeah, in two ticks. This is pretty awesome. Mm, can imagine. Yeah. You don't work in industry for 30 years without some great stories, I presume. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem. At least you're back now. Yes, I do apologize. Yeah, we were saying that, uh, Tom was saying that uh, probably the story is too awesome. Yeah, the internet just couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, well, you would have, Tom, but um, uh, you, it's, it's, um, it is amazing. I mean, you know, most people who were in there, where just couldn't believe what they were seeing, you know. It, it was it was incredible. There's no doubt about it. Um, anyway, yes, I'll I'll stop. Moving on up. to the next question, then there is a question from Julius Lee saying, "Has there been anything Ennis has asked you to draw that made you think this might be too far?" Um, no, not really. <laughs> um, uh, and in fact, uh, sometimes I've drawn stuff. That well, certainly back when we were <laughs> no is the easy answer, Julius. Actually, <laughs> um, not not yet. I, I've got to say though, I've got to. Um, I I haven't actually drawn any of Garth's more extreme stuff. You know, his more recent stuff like um, like Crossed or what have you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, really, uh, it's too much for me. Yeah, no, it's too much. it's too much for me. It's too much for me. Crossed. Garth sent me the first four issues of Crossed when, uh, you know, he was doing it. And uh, I got maybe halfway through the first issue and, yeah. and kind of gave up. I just, yeah. not because it was bad, well, just because it was just too Thanks extreme for me. This. <laughs> too, too not even that. Because that's humans going the other way. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not that it was... It was just that I, when I read a comic, I read a comic to to enjoy myself and maybe for a bit of escapism. And you know, sometimes yeah, there's violence and whatnot and such like and what. Um, 
but but I just I I I felt that I was just being chilled to my very core, and uh, and I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so so it wasn't that it was a bad story. It's just that in fact it's a very good story. It's just that I'm too much of a wuss these days. I mean, I used I used to enjoy horror movies and watching mm-hmm. horror movies and things like that, but I don't anymore. I don't I don't enjoy the that very much. And there's certain things that I just can't hack. I just can't hack cruelty to animals and in mm. anything. And I can't hack seeing women and children hurt um, really anymore. And uh, if I ever could, I don't know if I could. So, okay. so crossed kind of crossed a lot of my, <laughs> it just, it was too much. It was too much. So yeah, I mean, I'm, Garth is Garth. I've not done anything within the comics that he and I have worked on, but um, I don't think I could handle something like Frost. Really, it's yeah. a bit too extreme for me. So, so um, yeah, Garth wins. <laughs> <laughs> you got the last the other extreme. So there, there are other questions. So Bradley Tan just um, asked, "What do you think of uh, the Boys TV series? How's Garth in his script?" Yeah, I, I I love it. Uh, I think it's a great. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the first first series. It was terrific. Um, it it veers off from the comic a bit, yeah. um, but but not in an unacceptable way. I know Garth loves the show, and um, and I can see why. It's it's really great. Uh, the the guy who plays the Homelander. Oh, sorry, shit, I'm spitting on my artwork. The guy who plays the Homelander is incredible. Every yeah. time he's on screen, you are just you wait that <laughs> well yeah you're just sitting there going oh god what horrible crap is he going to do and yeah, uh, exactly. a lot of the time he doesn't do anything and you're just and then you cut scene and you just go oh oh thank god <laughs> you know <laughs> and you move on to the next thing but uh yeah he's fantastic he's really oh, really good uh, the, sh- the whole show is great everybody's really they're all perfect in it the guy um, you know Billy Butcher's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Frenchie's great. The female, yeah, they're all really, really well done. The the actors are all terrific. And um, there's a follow up question as well on the same uh, from from Bradley. Uh, how's Gaff and his scripts like? Uh, does it give you enough room to add your creativity vision on the books? I presume that um, he's talking about the uh, hero gazer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always room. To add your own little uh, imprint on things. Uh, I mean, Garth. Garth's specific when he when there when he needs to be, but mm-hmm. but uh, for the most part, he's just uh, he will he he will allow you a little leeway to to bring your own things to the table. Uh, I mean, when I drew Herogasm, I started drawing it, and I guess I hadn't been working with Garth for a while, and. Uh, and I was very tame on the uh, on the sexual elements, shall we say? Yeah. And I wanted Garth to went, take some images, but it's too hard for me. <laughs> it's too uh, well, hard Garth, for me to take it on a family show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gar- Garth, yeah said, use this. Garth, Garth basically said, "No, uh, I want to see everything. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's got to be like full on porno." Um, and uh, so I, I had to ch- change up. Uh, the one thing I do regret in the boys that where that I failed on was uh, I don't know if you remember, but there's a sequence in Hero Gasm where they go uh, Jack from Jupiter and A Train go into the basement to this extra secret club, and in there there is a there's a there's a hooker having sex with a dog. And uh, I forgot to draw a little crypto cape onto the dog and make oh. it and make it crypto. And I, I really regret that. Um, <laughs> it's like I, I screwed up there. I didn't Still haunts you to this day. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'll go to my grave sort of going, why didn't I make crypto? Fuck that hooker. I don't know. <laughs> you know, my kids will be looking at me going, Dad, <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So um, there are other comments that is actually coming in. Uh, well, look at that. We are already past the one hour mark, but we still have time. Um, the one full page of John McCrea original art that I have, an impressive parade of mechanismo judges in front of a hall of justice in is pristine oh, with no errors yeah. on it. Oh, well, all. that's a nice page. Yeah. That, that big splash page with all the judges walking, the all the robo judges walking forward. No, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. well, thank you very much for buying. Who who was that? Who picked that one up? It's Christopher Huang. I believe that is oh, exciting. Right. Well, thank you very much, Christopher. I mean, I really appreciate that. That's, you know, sometimes when you look at your artwork and you go, I really, I, I did a good job there. Um, that's that's one of those pages. So thank you very much, Christopher, for picking that up. Yeah, I really enjoyed that Mechanismo story. It was, you know, I, you always, if you're a comic fan who likes 2000 AD, uh, your goal in life is to work with John Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I know John quite well. He doesn't live that far away from me. And um, I, I often, well, don't often, but I sometimes go in to visit him. But uh, I've never actually worked with him, strangely. And uh, hmm. I, I was round at his house one time and I said to him, John, you know, if I don't get to draw a Judge Dredd story with you at some point, I'm, I'm, when I die, I'm going to be very unhappy. Sure. And uh, John said, oh, well, we'll have to sort that out then. So uh, we did a couple of Dredd stories together, or, or have done a couple so far. Being one and being uh, there, was a com there is a comment that's coming in from YouTube. He says that John Judge Dredd stuff is awesome. Oh, well, thank so you. I, I yeah. love drawing Dredd. He's a satisfying character to draw, his old stony face. I've got to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's very he's he's. But it's he's also hard to draw, right? I mean, he's. I mean, mm, most of his face well, is covered. Not and, really. Uh, no, that makes it easier. <laughs> <laughs> I do see that when you were testing it, you yeah. were drawing. Separate. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, his costume is complicated. Uh -huh. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Carlos. It really, I mean, if you look at Carlos's costumes that he designed, like uh, mm -hmm. Johnny Red, I mean Johnny Alpha and uh, mm -hmm. and and Dread and such like, he draws, he, he designs quite complicated costumes, but they're always so iconic and and clever. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Dread is once you get the hang handle of them, and I mean I, I have drawn Dread a number of times over the years. But I had never been happy with how I had drawn Dread really until I did my first Dread story with Wagner, and then and then and I really sort of decided I had to figure out Dread properly, and uh, I, I sort of sat down and made sure I, I I kind of really focused on making it the way I wanted it to be Dread, um, and I feel that I'm you know when I draw Dread. I do a pretty reasonable interpretation of them. I mean, I'm no Mick McMahon or Carlos Escara or Steve Dillon, but I'm not bad, you know. Uh, and um, and and I'm, I feel that like the Mechanismo story, I can I can sort of hold my hand up and say I've drawn a pretty damn good dread. That mm -hmm. it isn't the greatest dread ever done, but you know it stands up against some <laughs> stuff out there, <laughs> you know. So, so uh, there is another question that's coming in. Um, what's your inspiration of in creating six pack? I believe that from sector eight. Well, six, six pack, eh? <laughs> well, um, uh, he, he just had to be a fat drunk guy in a really bad fitting suit covered in vomit. <laughs> um, the, little, the little hat on his head was me. Um, uh, I put the little hat in his head, and I, I think that kind of sets him off. It kind of gives him just that extra little st stupidity, but also kind of, it, it makes him kind of poignant. And, and Garth really played in that when, when Six Pack dies, spoilers, uh, <laughs> when Six Pack dies at, in Hitman, and all that's left is his little hat. And Tommy picks up and goes, just all that's left is his little hat. And he's holding his little hat, the smolder of steam smoke coming off it, where he's been vaporized, or at least so we think. 
um, then you know that really rams at home. So, so I guess you know he wasn't hard to design at all. I, he just want you just he, you just basically went. What would a drunken idiot? <laughs> what sort of superhero costume would, would a drunken idiot come up with? And since <laughs> I've been a drunken idiot in my life, uh, it wasn't exactly hard. Um, uh, but I think the hat was kind of a nice touch. I, I will sort of hold up my hand and say I think the hat added that little bit of value to his costume. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's. I mean, Garth said, "Fat, short, drunken guy within a crap, ill-fitting outfit called six pack," and I went away and did the rest. So. Yeah, that was that was that, and and thus history was made. It seems like you're coming up with uh, answering a lot for your creations on this interview. <laughs> yeah, I've got to yeah, I've got to be held responsible responsible for some of these things. Eventually, somebody's yeah. got to take me to task for for doing this at some point, I guess. Um, um there's a slightly different uh, question that's actually coming. Do you yep. follow any Japanese manga? I Have do read. read I do read a, a fair bit. Um, I, I I finished Twentieth Century Boys the other day. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, obviously, I I may or may not be slightly older than you, but um, I was really into manga back in the eighties when mm -hmm. when it first started coming over into the U.S. and the U.K. Obviously, mm -hmm. with Akira and things like that, and I went to see Akira at the cinema. When it, wow. first, when it was first first released, I, I went to see it twice. In fact, um, when it was first released, so yeah, you know, I I am into this and that. Um, I can't say I'm an expert. Uh, I used to love Lum. I was a big Lum fan. Um, if you remember Lum, maybe you do, or maybe Lum. you don't. Lum. Mm -hmm. It was about this uh, sort of love triangle, or maybe it was a quadrangle between a an alien, a crazy alien princess, cat girl thing, and some boy and another girl. And they all went to school together or something. And he loved Lum and Lum loved Lum. And the girl loved him. And, uh, you know. Lum, uh, okay. Lum, L-U-M. Um, L-U-M, uh, right. Uh, it's uh, the, the, yeah. the lady with, uh, with uh, yeah, but the so green hair. Yeah, it's a female... Uh, it was a yeah. it was a woman creator. Uh, yeah. The woman creator. Well, in, in fact, the woman woman creator actually created even more, like Ran oh. Half and so forth. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I mean, she's she was is was extremely famous, uh, certainly yes. in Japan and and, and uh, anywhere else that manga is consumed. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, so like, Lum was a I was a big big into Lum. Uh, I can't remember yeah. uh, Gunsmith Cats. I read for a while. Um. Yeah, yeah. This and that. I've read Monster recently, which is great. Obviously, by the same by your twentieth century boys guy. How oh, he's just uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Cry, Crying Freeman and Sanctuary uh, okay. are both awesome as well. So and of course, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, of course, naturally. So yeah, yeah. I like my manga. You know, I I don't really. Uh, I mean, it's just comics, isn't it? Um, exactly. So if, exactly. It, it, so if it's good, it's it's, it's good. good. Really. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't try. I don't think to differentiate. I mean, I read. I read. Try and read everything. You know, I I, I I'll read slice of life stuff. I'm a big Yummy Fur fan, and uh, you know Chester Brown. Uh, I used to like uh, Cerebus and uh, Concrete by. Uh, you know, there's lots of great yeah. books that aren't. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I read uh, Joe Kubert's um, Jew Gangster recently, which was about uh, exactly <clears throat> that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. So, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> if, yeah, if, it's a good, if it's a good comic, it's a good comic. Um, I guess when you, I mean, if I, I, I'm. Uh, I I I know Chinese, so manga. I mean, it's a Japanese, but it's still the same thing. 
just sequential art. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Manga, manga, comics, regardless, it's just sequential art. Yeah. So if you yeah. have a story, just read it. Yeah, no need to actually take care. Just a waste of time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I understand the differentiation, but I don't understand the differentiation. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, I, I think we should actually. Uh, uh, are you done with the judge death? Um, uh, uh, well, do you think so? I think it's super it look really, amazing. Yeah, it looks looks super amazing. Yeah, yeah. There, he, there he is in his gory glory. Yeah, yes. Well, he only has his glory, glory. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sign it. Thank you. Because yeah. you know that's it's not finished until it's signed. Yes. So um, um, I think we will take a last question. Uh, do you support okay. any football club? Say that again. Do you, do you support watch any, any funny football clubs? Is it, do I what? What? Sorry, Hancock. Oh, sorry. I was just saying that. Do you support any football club? Oh God, no! I knew nothing about football. I, I, I don't. I'm not like I said about that Spider-Man picture earlier. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I have no interest in football, so I've no interest really in any sport. Um, when I was a kid, I was a nerd, mm -hmm. you know, I was skinny and weak, and uh, and I liked reading comics, um, and I hated sport. So you know, that's uh, and it's not changed much. Um, I, you know, I don't hate sport. I just hate or or football. I just hate the religion of it more than mm -hmm. anything. You know, yeah, I hate that. And I hate the idea that people just assume, especially mm -hmm. in the UK, they just assume you 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 follow football. You know, you, you people will just say to you, "So, uh, did you see the game last night?" And you go, uh, "Game? I, Monopoly? I was playing Monopoly. Is that what you mean?" <laughs> you know? And they look at you like you're a moron. And uh, you know, <laughs> so so no, I, I'm not a, a a sports guy. Sorry, I do apologize. But, um yeah, I think look at the time we we really have um we really have fun. Yeah, thank you for really oh, cool. sketching. Yeah. If you don't mind, maybe you can actually move the camera slightly facing you. you want to okay. see you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, for all my, the good God, let me see if I can creak this right. And oh God, it goes that way. Yes. Hello. Hi. Okay. Yeah. So there's, um, you see, there's the hands covered in tipex. Uh, from yeah. The work, you know. That, that shows list. that you've been working. <laughs> that shows Pardon? that you've been working. That shows that you've been working and drawing. So yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like real manual labor. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like if you're actually digging dirt, but you have no dirt on your hand, it's nothing. You're you're not no, working. No, no. No, so no. Uh, soft, really soft hands. Yeah, soft hands. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, John. I, I think it's thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, next up, next round. We can actually have a longer session. Sure, sure. More you people want to actually, invite you back. Yeah, I definitely want to want to actually hear more story from you. Yeah, you sound like you have loads of great stories. Loads more. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got more stories. You can uh, let me shut open. me up once I get going. And I, I barely even go through all the uh, the images, like the things that you actually done in uh, Tangle Web Spider Man. That's sure. one very scary images that actually lasted me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, I, I blame Garth for most of it. <laughs> you know, like I said, pacifist vegetarian here. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a lovely person. And, uh, yes, I'm sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. but yeah, it's been a pleasure, Tom and HK. It's good, good chatting to you. And, and I yeah. thank you to everybody who's listened in and, uh, and asked questions. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. And uh, oh, uh, if anybody's uh, interested in the death, I yeah. guess just drop me a line. Uh, if you do want to buy it off me, I will donate the money to. Uh, I'm, I'm donating money at the moment to from my shop to Red Cross, Medicine Sans Frontieres, and uh, Black Lives Matter. So mm -hmm. if anybody buys this, the money will mm -hmm. go to those three things. Will be split evenly between them. So if you're into that, if you like this Judge Death drawing, what I just did, then, you know, let, me just, let, let oh. the guys know, 
and um, if if you want it, and uh, we can sort something out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John, you just pick it up again. Just let everyone see the judge death again. Yeah. Uh, oh crap! Here we go. All right, yes. Amazing. Uh, slightly, uh, yeah, amazing. So yeah. Uh, so anyone that's actually interested with this piece, just um, drop uh, John. Uh, anyone that's actually interested with that piece, just drop John a line, or you can actually just let me know. I can just message you. Sure. Either via me or or through you guys is absolutely. I you know. <laughs> guys, you are on Facebook anyway. So yeah. Sure. Okay, Facebook, thank Twitter. You. I'm on Facebook um, on, uh, and Twitter, at McRaeman is my handle mm -hmm. on Twitter. And I'm on Instagram as well, at McRaeman1. So, okay, cool. Okay, okay, thank you, John. Um, it's stay been a safe. pleasure, guys. It's been a pleasure. I'm looking forward to actually chat with you again in the future, near future. Meantime, just okay. stay safe. Be good. Okay. Bye. Right. Okay, take it easy, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye. See ya. Okay, bye, guys. See ya.